All right, welcome back. We're gonna be doing some examples with our compound interest equation. Hopefully these will be helpful for you to see how to use that equation to solve some various different problems. So let's check out this problem right here. It says, John deposits $10,000 into an account that earns compound interest at a rate of 5% per year. Find the amount of interest in his account at the end of years one, two, and three, as well as the amount of interest credited in each year. So we'll start by writing our equation so we remember to use it, and that is the future value equals the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of years as the power. So before we start with year one, the first thing that you always do is to find out what you have and then figure out what you need. So I always like to write out what everything is that I have here. So we know that our initial deposit, C, is $10,000. We know that our interest rate is 5%, which is equal to 0 0.05. And we've got three different amount of years here. We've got one, two, and three. And so we'll just kind of do that as we go along. But I'll still write n equals one, two, three, depending on our scenario. So we'll start with year one. And so in year one, we have $10,000 multiplied by one plus 0 0.05, which is our interest rate, to the first power because it's just one year. And this is gonna tell us how much is in our account at the end of year one. So if we plug that into our calculator, it would be 10,000 times 1.05. We would find that the amount in our account at the end of the year would be $10,500. And so then what does that mean our amount of interest was? Well, we started with $10,000 and we now have $10,500. So you could just do a little bit of subtraction there and find that the amount of interest that we generated over that period was 500. But the simpler way to do that, if it's getting a little confusing and you're not sure, well, what, what exactly is that? You can just multiply 10,000 times the interest rate and you'll find that $500 is how much interest accumulated during year one. So now let's move on to year two. In year two, we now start with $10,500 and we multiply this also by one plus 0 0.05. And this is also just going one year in the future, so we would write one. Now, that seems a little counteractive, right? We have this equation, why wouldn't we just put a two there? You know, what is going on? Well, there's two different ways to do this, and I showed you one way here, but we could have also written $10,000 times one plus 0 0.05 squared. And these are going to be equal to the same amount. So this would be equal and equal, and they would both, go to the same amount. In this case, it's going to be one, one, zero, two, five. Now, why are these two things the same? Why did these both get this same value? Well, it's kind of where this equation comes from, right? We can choose to do one year at a time, right? We did this year, and now we have this amount, so then we use that amount to do one more year, or we can just start with our initial amount and bring it forward two years. So once again, we either have our amount at the end of year one, and bring it forward one year, or we have our amount from the beginning and just bring it forward two years. So there's there's two ways to do that. And I'll show you with year three that this also happens there as well. So then if we wanna know our amount of interest accumulated, we just have to take our $10,500, which is the amount we started with in year two, and multiply it by the interest rate. And we'll see that we earned $525. Again, we could have also just taken this amount and subtracted this amount, and we would have found the same number. So that would be our amount in the account at the end of year two, and then our amount of interest over that year. So then we go into year three, and now we're starting with 11025, and we're gonna be multiplying that by one plus 0 0.05 to the first power, because this is the amount at the end of year two, and we're just bringing it forward one more year. Again, we could also write it like this, 10,000 times one plus 0 0.05 to the third power, and that would be the same thing. But since it wants to know the amount in his account at the end of years one, two, and three, we kind of have to do them separately. Otherwise, if it just said, how much is in the end of the account at year three? Well, we don't need to do all of this. We could just do this right here. But since it wants to know each one, we do each of them individually. So then we'll also find that these both lead to the same answer. In this case, it's 11576.25. So then we can box that in 
And then if we wanna know how much interest we accumulated over that time, we can take the amount from year two and multiply it by our interest rate. And that would give us our answer of $551.25. And I'll box that in. And again, we could have also found that by taking this value and subtracting this value. If you take your total amount from year three and subtract the total amount from year two, you would just get the amount of interest that you earned over that period. So that's where this number would come from if you didn't wanna do it this way. So there we go, we completely answered this question now. We found the amount in the account at the end of years one, two, and three, and we also found how much interest we earned over that period in year one, two, and three. Next, let's look at this question. We have Carl deposits $100 into account earning 10% compound interest per year. Find how much he will accumulate in 10 years as well as his total interest earned over that period. So let's start by writing our equation. We have the future value equals the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of years. And then let's figure out what we have here. We have an initial deposit of $100. We have an interest rate or compound interest rate of 10%. And we also know that our amount of years we're interested in is 10. So C is going to be equal to 100. And then we'll have our interest rate I, which is 10% or 0.1 in decimal format. And then we have our number of periods N, which in this case is 10 years. And then if we plug all these into our equation, we have the future value equals 100 times one plus 0.1 to the 10th power. And then we can reduce this a little bit to be 100 times 1.1 to the 10th power. And then if we plug that into our calculator, we will find that our answer is $259.37. And we'll box that in. That would be how much money is in the account at the end of 10 years. So then the question also asks to find his total interest earned over the period. This is how much he accumulates in 10 years, but how much interest did he actually earn? Well, he started with $100 and he ended with $259.37. Now he didn't take any money out of this account. We're not told about that. He also didn't add any more in by himself. So all of this money that was generated from being 100 to 259 was all from interest. So if we just subtract, we have $259.37 minus this $100, we would then find that he earned $159.37 of interest. So if you ever asked, what is the total interest earned over a period? You just have to take what you ended with and subtract the initial deposit, assuming that there are no other deposits or other withdrawals happening. Okay, so for our final example, we have Bob deposits $500 into an account earning 2% interest compounded monthly. How much is in the account after three years? So this is a little bit different. You probably noticed me uh, put a lot of emphasis on the word monthly, right? Because so far we've only seen interest rates that are compounded yearly. So how do we deal with this? Well. First, let's just write down everything we know, and then we'll work with that a little bit later. So first, let's write down our equation that we're going to be using. We have our future value equals the initial deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of years power. And we know our initial deposit is 500, and we know that we're earning an interest rate of 2% monthly. So I'm gonna write interest rate equals 2%, which equals 0 0.02 monthly. And this is important. And we also know that our number of years is going to be three. So how do we deal with this monthly interest rate? Because when we were first introduced to this equation, we only considered yearly compounded interest rates, but it is actually not limited to just yearly rates. We could also see monthly rates and other rates for other periods. So if we're asking about three years and this is compounded monthly, we just have to ask ourselves, well, how many months are in three years? Because in this case, it seems like months is going to be our period. And so it's common knowledge that one year is equal to 12 months. Then that would mean that three years is equal to 36 months. So even though we originally created this equation with the idea that it's being compounded yearly, this can actually be applied to many different types of periods. All this is saying is that we are earning interest every certain number of times. So if we are earning interest 
every month, well, we got to calculate that every month right? We have to account for every month within these three years. If it told us how much is in the account at the end of three months, we could just write three in there. We wouldn't have to worry about figuring out, you know, how many months are in a year because it was just asking us for how many months. So our actual value of n here will be 36, not three. But the bottom line here is that it's important for your interest rate to match your N value, right? If your interest rate is compounding interest monthly, you better have N be the number of months. If this is a yearly interest rate, you should have N representing a number of years. Those two things have to be representing the same time period. If one is months, the other one has to be in months. If one is in years, the other has to be in years. And so since our interest is compounded monthly and we wanna know how much is in after three years, we have to generate that interest every single month over the three years, which means we're going to be going through 36 months, as I have already written down. And I'm taking a lot of time to explain this, but I wanna make sure that it makes sense why we have to do what we're doing right here. So then we should be ready to calculate the answer for this question. So our future value is going to be equal to the initial deposit, $500, times one, plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.02. And then we're going to raise that to the number of months. Remember, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep stressing this. This is a monthly compound interest rate. So our N value has to represent a number of months. So in this case, 36 months, because we want to know how much is in the account at the end of three years. So then we can calculate this. And this is Pretty simple, it's just $500 times 1.02, the 36th power. So then we just plug that into our calculator to get a total of $1,019.94. So what initially seemed to be a little bit of a tricky problem turns out to not be so bad. The takeaway here is to make sure that you know how often your interest rate is being compounded. If it's being compounded yearly, you have to make sure that your N is the number of years. If it's being compounded monthly, you need to know how many months it's being compounded for. If it was twice a year, then you'd have to have this in amount of how many half years, if that makes sense. There'll be more examples like this as we get into more topics of this class. So if this seems a little overwhelming, don't worry. It's actually a lot easier to pick up than it may seem. So just kind of continue to go through these topics and eventually, I promise you, this will click if it has not already. All right, that's all I have for these examples in this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. But until then, I'll see you next time.